What is up everybody? Clint Esposito here with The Clint Files number seven. We're going to talk about lightweight workouts for recovery and even just aesthetics. Um, I know everybody likes to get in the gym and go for personal records, but I don't necessarily think that that's the best way to go. Um, I know it's not the best way to go if you're trying to recover from an injury. Anybody that doesn't know, I am not a doctor, uh, so check with your doctor on all this. But what I am is somebody that did freestyle motocross for 16 years. I raced motocross before that, and I dealt with a bunch of injuries, and I rehabbed them all myself. Um, so... Through all that, I have done a lot of studying and actually learned a bunch of stuff about the human body, nutrition, getting better. This is not new. I didn't come up with any of this, okay? Been a lot of research. Some of the stuff that I've figured out kind of on my own has uh, was already out there. I basically went from doing super intense workouts all the time to and whether that be I never did a ton of weights but if I did lift I would kind of lift heavy um, and I would definitely push myself super hard since then since a couple of injuries back to back and being older I've actually pulled way back from that and started doing much higher reps lighter weights and trying to work out more frequently Basically, after the last injury, I got an infection, all this stuff. I was so, you know, like beat up and torn down that if I was to work out super hard, I'd be sore for like the next four days. So basically, you have diminishing returns at that point because you do all this work one day and then you can't do anything for, you know, almost a week. So the theory is that if you can do less weight or a, uh, you know, a workout that you can do that still pumps up your muscles and gets you active, but doesn't burn you out so that you can work out again the next day. By the end of the week, you will have done more reps, pushed more weight than you would have if you just worked out heavier on a couple of days. The other issue especially when rehabbing injuries, is that our bodies become uneven. I trashed my right shoulder, and then basically that one was way weaker than, you know, my left shoulder. So benching wouldn't work. Um, I broke my one leg, so that one was weaker, so squats won't work. Um, if I did squats, I would have to do really lightweight, almost just a bar, and get the machine that's right in front of I would use a Smith machine just so I didn't have to stabilize it. I would get in front of the uh, in the machine that had a mirror in front of it so that I could watch my hips and make sure that my hips didn't favor to one side or the other. Because your body, as soon as you get hurt like that, your body automatically, without you even thinking about it, starts to compensate and put, you know, transfer the weight over to your other leg or whatever. So basically, if I tried to squat anything even remotely heavy, I would end up with my hips hurting and my back hurting, the muscles in my back, because I'd be, like I said, pushing with one side more than the other. So I started going to, one, unilateral exercises. And that just means that you're doing one arm or leg at a time versus benching. You're going to, you know, with a bar, you're going to use dumbbells and you're going to use the amount of weight that your weak side can do. Same thing with leg extensions, uh, curls, anything like that. You're going to base it off of your weak side. So you're going to use the amount of weight that that weak side can do and then just match the reps with the other side. Now, I would start, I would basically figure out the weight and then I would start my reps uh, with the good side. And I'll get into that a little bit later um, because it does tie into something else. So after I started uh, going by this theory of I'm going to work out less intense but more often, I started to research and I found somebody from the 
uh, who is called the godfather of modern bodybuilding named Eugene Sandow. Okay, let me bring up Mr. Sandow here. Yeah, that's a dude in the 1890s. Okay, so you know he wasn't juicing back then s as far as steroids. Um, and I, I will have to say that most likely I'm pretty confident that the food back then was much more natural and better. So there is that. But the dude still at a time when nobody looked like that, even, you know, power lifters were just big, bulky dudes. They weren't ripped. This dude looks like a friggin' statue. And he actually said that going to museums and stuff like that is and seeing the old Italian sculptors, you know, uh, art pieces that dudes, people look like that, that they were ripped back in the day or at some point in time. So he was originally trying to be a strong man, but he was too small. He wasn't strong enough, but he obviously carved out a crazy physique at the time nobody had. So then he started traveling around doing shows, um, apparently with a leaf over his pecker. You know what I mean? That's what you do when you look like that. And no one else on the planet does. So he started doing shows. He then became basically like a fitness guru type of guy. Like uh, basically all these guys on Instagram. Like this guy had that, you know, plan 200 years ago or whatever it was. He uh, sold fitness workouts. um fitness equipment he sold uh diet plans and then he went around and performed at shows so this guy's the real deal now one of his books called strength and how to obtain it uh i basically kind of stumbled across this i started to think you know like um while i was working out i started to think like maybe i could find somebody an old time person you know, that was actually, I think I came across a picture of him and I was like, what the fuck is this dude's <laughs> deal <laughs> like from the 1800s? And then I started to research him. And now his the reason I bring him up in the whole lightweight and rehab is that this guy's workout um, theory was just that. He tells adult men to work out with five pound weight. Okay, so obviously not going, not trying to be huge. Okay, now he has said, um, and people have addressed, that obviously he's not gigantic. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ron Coleman, all those dudes in their prime, you know, make him look like a little kid. But uh, I like this dude's physique. This is, um, he looks strong. He's ripped. I mean, that's really what you want, right? Who... You know, not all of us want to be that gigantic. So his theory is low weight, high reps every single day. So now these are basically diagrams of all the workouts. I've stumbled across this. I found it. I printed it out. And I actually did all these workouts for a while. And I still do. Some days I really like kettlebells. I really like, you know, uh, body weight stuff, pull-ups, push-ups, which he has push-ups in this. But. So say I do uh, kettlebells and stuff like that, I won't do his workout. But on a day that maybe I do a mountain bike ride and I just do cardio, I will come back and do like the upper body, you know, exercises from this because it is very low intensity. It's kind of like the days that I don't really want to work out super hard. I do this and then it at least gives you a little bit of pump on, in your muscles and, um, you know, blood flow and stuff like that. So now exercise one is just a regular one armed curl, one arm at a time. He does 50 of those and then he increases by five every day. The second exercise here is just reverse curls. So he's just got his arm instead of his palm facing up, his palms facing down. 25 of those he increases by two every day and he does these every day. Um, I did not increase that fast. I didn't even realize it was 50. Honestly, I thought it was 25 of everything. So I've been doing 25 regular curls, but um, I actually have no noticed a difference. Here's another one. It's uh, 
he does holds his arms out straight and he does single arm curls towards his ear. The second one he does his arms out straight, does both arms to the ears at the same time. And again, these are all like 25 to 50 of each. This one he holds his arms out in front of him and then he brings them out. You can see the bottom left one is the uh, or the one on the left is the number two of that. So he just holds his arms in front of him, then brings them out to his side and brings them back in front of him. The next exercise is just, you know, one single arm presses over your head. Um, and then he does uh, on the left here, I guess people on audio can't see this. He's just got his arms down in front of him and then he picks his arms up in front of him one arm at a time. The next movement is having your arms out to your side and you're just uh, twisting your forearm. So you're basically doing a forearm workout. You're holding the weight and twisting your forearm back and forth. Next exercise is you stand holding the weight and now you punch with it and pull it back. So again, all this stuff is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, if you're on audio, there's a picture of him doing push-ups, butt naked on a cheetah skin rug. Um, it's not necessary that you're butt naked on a cheetah skin rug, but you will get 10% more gains. It's just science. It's science. So he does push-ups. I don't think he's doing 25. And then there's some of his workout equipment. So another uh, thing that he was very adamant about is that the reason he uses the light weights is that... He says, if you're using heavy weights, then you're just trying to pick the weight up and you're not thinking about or forcing the contraction. Whereas if you have light weight like that, you need to actually focus on the contraction and really focus on the muscle working. Now, I agree with this also because I have had some injuries, like my right shoulder here, where afterwards I couldn't lift my arm up in front of me. Um, I think I could pick it up out to the side, but I couldn't pick it up straight in front of me. So I actually started by picking my right arm up with my left arm and just fighting it down. So just thinking in my head, because that was all I couldn't flex it or anything and actually be like, hold it up. So I would just think in my head, you know, fight it, fight it, keep your arm up. And my arm would just drop at a steady pace. Eventually, I got to a point where I could hold my arm straight out. I could pick it up and I could hold it there. And then eventually, obviously, I got to a point where I could actually start to pick it up. Now, uh, when I went into the gym, say that because of that shoulder was messed up, it kind of my right arm is weaker than my left. And just even from not using it for that long, your muscle atrophies and it like forgets what to do, as silly as that sounds. Your muscles can actually forget and they need to be reminded. So I kind of discovered this. I would go to the gym and pick up a weight. Okay, say I picked up a, not, it wasn't even, it was like five pounds in the beginning, right? So I curl with five pounds. I do my first set. Now I would do, Whatever the weak arm could do, I'd just do with my other arm or leg. So that way it didn't, uh, I didn't get more uneven. So I would pick it up. I'd do, say, five pounds. Put it back down. Now, when I went to do the second set, I would pick it back up, and it would be way light even for my weak arm. And by, like, I'd increase it by, like, five pounds or something like that. Like, so double the weight when you're from five to ten after one set. I wish gains came like that normally, right? But, like, I didn't get any bigger. It was just a fact of more muscle fibers were going, oh, yeah, we forgot that this is what we do. So I'm going to take that one even further. And when I broke my leg, I did a lot of nerve damage, and the leg didn't want to, like, after a couple of months, I realized, like, I was walking, I was happy about that, but then I started to realize that I was kind of dragging my left foot around like not really picking it up off the f off of the floor. I was just kind of dragging it, and I just kind of I saw myself in the mirror, and I was like, oh, I'm walking horribly. <laughs> so what I did was I actually would uh, 
you know, a couple times a day, just for a couple of minutes, I would stare down at my legs and I would watch my right leg and foot come up and articulate and put my heel down. So then what I did in my head, I've just thought, watched my left leg and then thought, make it feel exactly like that one feels. So by watching that and thinking about how that foot feels when it picks up and you pick your toes up and then you put your heel down, I started to just do it with the left one by watching. So I'm like, okay, pick your foot up, pick your toes up, hit, put your heel down. And I probably only did that for a couple of weeks. And then the muscle was like, or the whole leg was like, oh, yeah, this is what we do. That's called muscle memory. You can train your body to do anything. If you really want to do, I had learned to do backflips. I was terrified of backflips. But you know what? I wanted to do it bad enough that I made myself do it over and over and over and over until my body just knew how to do it. So that's the same thing with everything. Um, repetition. Think about it. Put the focus in and contract your muscles. Um, you know, mind muscle connection is huge. So basically just wanted to hop on here, give you guys a little bit of tip. Don't burn yourself out. You don't need to go for a personal record uh, every time you get into the gym. Just put in the reps. Squeeze your muscles. Think about it. Focus on them. Um, some days, yes, you want to go heavy. That's totally cool. But on average, I would keep especially, you know, and I'm going back and forth between healthy people and rehab. I think this is great for healthy people. I think this is great for people that are just getting into working out. Uh, if you're just getting into working out, great art, great workout plan. I'm actually going to link uh, where I found it here. Uh, in the show notes, so check it out, whether you're on YouTube or uh, audio. I'll have it in the show notes, but it's a great plan if you're just getting into working out and you want to start to build some muscle. The other thing that's great about this, and I'm going back, the other thing that's great about this, when people try and go too heavy, okay, your muscles will get strong way faster than your ligaments and tendons will. So the issue is, especially, you know, people do steroids or whatever, but so your muscles get real strong. You're always going for personal best, but your ligaments and tendons take way longer to get strong than your muscles do. So what happens when you're benching 250 and you have a nine year old tendons? You're, it's not going to work out that well. You're going to strain the tendons. So less weight, more frequently for a longer duration of time is going to also help strengthen your tendons and your ligaments and just help you be functionally fit for life um, and just be able to, you know, like, I'm screwed up, but I can pick up, bend over and pick up boxes and, you know what I mean, chop wood or whatever. So uh, that's it for today. Remember, lightweight, high reps on most days you can always have your hard day here or there uh, that's fine but especially if you're rehabbing I've definitely gotten back gotten too eager and then screwed myself up for the next couple of months just because you know my ego and I wanted to get back into working out so everybody especially if you're rehabbing chill out put your ego aside do look ridiculous in the gym doing your five pound weights or buy some five pound weights and do it at the house, but chill out, put the time in. You can get in really good shape. You can get bigger. You're not going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger from this, but you can uh, definitely build some muscle mass and uh, really, you know, get in better shape using light weights more frequently. So hope this helps. And I will be back soon with some more little tips. Remember, I'm not a doctor, so ask your doctor. But I did sleep at a Holiday Inn. No, I didn't. I slept at a hospital a bunch of times. That's actually what happened. All right, later.